Welcome to our webinar series for professionals. So, hi everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar. We've had uh, a bit of a break from webinars. It's been summertime, uh, well, wintertime if you're in South Africa, but summertime if you're in Europe. And um, we haven't really been able to plan anything into the calendar because we've had some live events until now. So uh, and today I'm so happy that I finally managed to get Thomas on the chair and uh, give a presentation for you all. So I hope you've all had a wonderful summer and uh, winter for those in South Africa. <laughs> um, so, but I'm Anne Catherine, co-founder of Nordic Laboratories and DNA Life. We are a group of companies who is dedicated to change healthcare through functional medicine and personalized medicine. And remember, N equals one. And also remember that all your tools um, that you can find those in the in your BMS account with both supplements and lab tests. And today we're going to talk about a supplement. Um, and for that, we will send out because we are recording uh, as always. Uh, and with the recording, we will share also a further discount code for you all uh, so that uh, you can get special discount on uh, the product that Thomas is uh, talking about. So I just want to inform you a little bit about the next few events we have, because now the webinars are starting and you will be maybe too busy to follow everyone. But on Thursday, so in a one week's time, we have Helen Gauchi. Uh, who will present on our new DNA test well, that is called DNA Call. And you can say it's it's old wine on new bottles in a way because it's health, diet, and sport kind of wrapped into one so that you don't have conflicting information in the different tests. And with that, we have a special uh, introduction price, et cetera, that I will uh, inform you about when you do the webinar, but also we will send out mailings around that. And then on the 5th of October, we have Armin Schwarzbach, Dr. Armin Schwarzbach, who's going to introduce us to uh, new thinking around in infections and Lyme's disease and other co-infections. That's I love Armin when he's uh, pre presenting on infections. There's always something new. So I'm sure you will um, be inspired when you listen to him as well. Then we have a live in-person event in Dubai coming up on 27th to the 29th of October. So if you haven't booked an autumn holiday yet, now is the time to go to Dubai and combine it with some education. <laughs> so uh, we will have Umaro presenting there and Helen Gauchi as well will be presenting. And we will also have, an, oh, I've forgotten his name, uh, we will have a doctor uh, educating on mold toxicity and organic acids as well. So that was a little bit of a, a, a lot of information from me. So today, the star of the show is Thomas Hokanson, um, who is a, he has a master's in pharmaceutical sciences and been working um, in that field for about 15 years. And through his own uh, life story and health journey or yeah, sickness journey or however you want to use that, he, uh, he, he has somehow built a passion in, in regards to how you need to take responsibility of your own health, but also uh, how uh, some nutritional supplements and nutrition in general can act as medicine or medicinal, uh, have medicinal function in the body. And today he's going to present on collagen and bone broth, uh, how he has managed to manufacture it in a uh, sustainable way. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce you all to Thomas. And when Thomas talks, I'm very quiet because he really knows his stuff. And I don't think Thomas says anything on, until, unless he's really certain. So <laughs> my head up to you, Thomas, and I will pass on the stage to you. I will mute myself. As usual, you can write in the chat. I will take note of any questions as good as I can and bring them up at the end of the presentation and ask Thomas to answer some of the 
uh, questions that I'm not able to answer myself. And yes, we are recording. And um, so we will share the recording with you uh, later. And also we will share the slides with you when we send out the recording. So I'll sip up. And Thomas, <laughs> you slide your, or share your slides with us. Thank you, Anne Catherine. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, let me share my screen. And yeah, you can, you can, you can just... Uh, Interrupt at any time, and Katrina, that's uh, that's okay. So let's see here. So hello everyone, and I trust that you can uh, see my presentation now. So um, first, I would um, like to thank you, uh, and Katrina, and and the whole um, Nordic team for, which are always working hard to 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 make a difference in the in the modern healthcare system. I think we we all agree that we we need to change how we um, how we look at how we source our foods and how it play into our um, biology and, and chemistry. So so briefly to to in, intro, introduce my um, my small humble um, food and supplement company. It's called Functional Future, and um, we have created. Um, I have together with. Um, with my partner Frederik, uh, created this to to have a better alternative to the to the existing. So we have um, we have started with creating the potent ginger turmeric shots. Um, we have a bone broth liquid product, which uh, both of those are biodynamically certified. We also have a calcium bone matrix product, and then we are having this very interesting um, freeze dried bone broth powder um, which we call the the collagen powder that that product uh, is the one that we are going to, to talk about today so so at, at functional future we we strive to be as sustainable as possible to make the least negative impact on our, our planet it's also why uh, many of our products are biodynamic uh, certified and as most of you you know these these raw materials for for biodynamic certification is is the highest standard of, of raw materials that you can you can get on on this planet I'm I'm sure so and we, we also believe that it's not only the, the inside of the product that needs to be sustainable but also the the, the the whole thing around the supply chain and the packaging so as and Catherine said I'm um, I have a, a, a master's in pharmaceutical sciences. I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry with uh, quality assurance and product manufacturing uh, of uh, pharmaceutical uh, drugs. I co-founded the Functional Future. I think it was, yeah, six years ago now. Um, so what what started it, it all for me is is that I have struggled with autoimmune diseases my 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 whole life uh, from from the age of, of three years, uh, primarily rheumatoid arthritis. I have also uh, been in a in a wheelchair for for ten years when when I was log, uh, when I was younger. Um, thankfully, I found out how how much functional foods and functional medicine and testing and biohacking um, could have an impact on my my disease and uh, now i'm i'm able i'm able to walk i'm able to play with my my two daughters rose and anna um, i'm deeply involved in the, the danish biohacking community and, and help coach children with, with rheumatoid arthritis so that that's really a a, a meaningful meaningful um, endeavor for me so um, yeah um, i also saw uh, on this journey a, a a food and supplement industry that was not as transparent as I um, would have liked it to be. Um, so, so that is also why uh, we started um, producing these uh, these functional foods and, and supplements uh, ourselves. Um, so, in, in terms of what I have uh, been been through, I have um, I've tried. I mean, over over 200 different supplements. Uh, I've, I think I've spent uh, around 1,000 euros on different biohacking equipment. You know, peptide injections, stem cells in in my in my joints and my eye. And so, 
I've I've been through through a lot, um, and uh, yeah, but it, it only inspires me it inspires me to um, to just um, yeah make make a difference for 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 people. Um, yeah, so so let's let's jump into the the, the collagen uh, part of the, the talk. So first, um, to understand how um, how we at Functional Future manufacture our um, our collagen. First, let's take a look at a standard product manufacturing for for collagen. So. Um, Regarding the, the chemicals used in, in traditional collagen production, uh, specific chemicals can vary depending on how they extract and how they process um, uh, their, their collagen. So, but in general, uh, they start with this bovine hide, so, so the skin of the, um, of the, of the cattle uh, or fish uh, carcasses. So that's uh, that's the basis of, of most standard collagen. Then then if it's uh, if it's the the hide from the from the cattle, then they cut the outer layer of the skin. Um, then they they separate the um, uh, the collagen from the the hide tissue. Uh, they use um, uh, something called um, uh, in enzymolysis to, to do this. So this is a biochemical decomposition. Uh, think of it as a fermentation uh, that is catalyzed by, by an enzyme. So these, these enzymes could be trypsin, could be pepsin. Uh, we all know these, uh, especially pepsin for, from our own uh, stomach acid. Um, these are uh, aided for collagen extraction. Um, it helps these enzymes break down the, the the proteins, facilitate separation of the collagen from the from the skin components or bones if it's from fish carcasses. Um, they use um, also strong acids such as uh, hydrochloric acid, and it also further helps to break down tissue and f facilitate the the, the collagen uh, the collagen extraction. Um, so, so what is um, what is important about about this step in the process is that um, in in order in order for them to extract uh, this this collagen, they must break down the collagen to almost single uh, single peptides, um, and in that process, um, they do two things: they um, they just destroy the the, the native uh, structure of the of the collagen, it makes it more uh, absorbable, but you lose some of the some of the signaling effects uh, that a more intact or more native collagen molecule uh, has um, um, when 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 the molecules are um, absorbed into the body and are interacting with our our gut lumen, um, our intestinal its intestinal tract. What is also happening um, here with, with the strong acids is that they destroy the, the inherent hyaluronic acid, which is in the, uh, in the skin and in the carcasses uh, themselves. Yeah, so, so then after, after that uh, process, um, they use uh, some, some filterization. Um, then we go um, in box six here, some, some decoloriz decolorization. Um, here they heat uh, by water pressure, uh, further um, remover, removing um, larger collagen strings and further destroying hyaluronic acid. Then they, they go to a, um, a deodorize, deodorization. Um, here, um, so these two steps, the decolorization, they, they typically also um, uh, in regards to removing the color uh, of of the of the the, the process, uh, they use acetone uh, to to do this. Um, then then the, they use a, a filter again. Uh, they concentrate the um, the kind of the, the the liquid that they have there. Um, in the end, they do a degermining. Um, so this is a physical removing of uh, any microorganisms that. Um, that have um, built up through the, the process. Uh, so they are allowed to have 
certain micro, um, microorganisms throughout the, the process and they are removed uh, at the end here they, they typically use different soaps and detergents um, then uh, they they dry and they package so um, in drying um, they typically uh, do a drying that is a um, that's freeze freeze drying um, as we do as well however they uh, are interested in one thing in this step is to 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 make the process as fast as possible uh, with the highest uh, output as as possible of of course um, but they haven't studied the the different temperature um, and duration time duration periods that the the liquid with the collagen um, um, are experiencing. So, so here they are also further um, destroying innate uh, collagen and uh, hyaluronic acid. Um, then they they typically use different uh, preservatives. Um, could be formaldehyde, sodium acide. Um, they may be used to prevent uh, bacterial growth and and uh, doing doing storage and, and transportation. So so all in all, this is a process that is um, has uh, um, a lot of impact on the the environment. Um, it is uh, it is an, an industry that has grown a lot. And um, we all know when, when, when these things get, get maybe too big or if the demand is, is very high, then, then uh, manufacturers can compromise on, on pr production. So some of the, the primary concerns surrounding the, surrounding the standard collagen production is um, in terms of um, if you have your collagen production from fish carcasses, then it's um, the overfishing. So um, uh, the demand for collagen uh, has, has led to this overfishing in some regions and it is dis uh, disrupting the marine ecosystems and also um, depleting fish populations. Um, so that's, um, that, that's one thing. Then, then you, you also, in, in terms of the, the fishing, you have uh, the problem with, with bycatch. So... Um, <clears throat> When these um, when you use these fit, uh, fishing methods, then um, this this bycatch is, um, um, is is not not an option op optimal um, way of fishing. As is as it leads to to, to decline in ecological uh, imbalances imbalances in the in the sea and in in the in the, the sea life. So. And the, the World uh, Wildlife uh, Fund Foundation estimates that, that the global bycatch is around 40% of the, of the total catch. So, so it is quite a significant uh, problem um, with, with this uh, bycatch. Then you also have uh, habitat destruction. <clears throat> so standard collagen production um, can contribute to um, habitat destruction, particular uh, in the case of uh, land-based sources, such as cows or pigs, and these uh, large-scale farming operations uh, often require defore deforestation, so destroying of um, a forest um, uh, cre for creating these uh, grazing lands and to grow the animal in, in these uh, um, uh, feed feedlot uh, operations and also to to have um, to have the possibility to grow animal crops, um, so this this de deforestation uh, leads to uh, unfortunately loss of, of, of much biodiversity and disrupts the the ecosystem. Um, one other important thing is the well, it's the water pollution. So these this chemical uh, production process. Um, can generate a lot of water pollution through the, the dis discharge of, of waste materials. Um, this is, uh, um, of course, from the, from the animals, um, uh, their feces um, in particular, um, uh, when, when confined in a, in a small, small area. 
Uh, then, then also uh, it could be uh, from chemicals that we just talked about that, that they use in the process. So these pollutants can con contaminate the nearby uh, water systems, affecting uh, water life, potentially harming uh, human health. And, um, and that's, uh, that, that is, of course, a, a, a big concern. Uh, then there's the, the carbon footprint. So the collagen in industry contributes um, to uh, a lot of greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions, uh, primarily through the, the, the livestock uh, and the transportation of the, the collagen products. <clears throat> so, so this uh, livestock uh, livestock farming is a significant um, source of methane, um, this potent uh, greenhouse gas. And additionally, this um, this energy in intensive process uh, that I just described, um, involving the collagen extraction, uh, also contributes to, um, to these uh, carbon uh, emission. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but let's let's take a look at how uh, we manufacturing our uh, our bone broth uh, collagen. So what what we do is is quite basic and and just uh, um, very fundamental. So we 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 take the meaty marrow bones um, either from from um, organic farms or biodynamic grown uh, farms. We place it in a, in a pot of water. We add the, some vegetables and herbs. Uh, we apply uh, heat. So what we uh, specifically have is a is a pressure pressure cooker. Uh, this uh, this pressure cooking uh, method is very um, uh, energy um, efficient. Um, so we only uh, we only cook for for very few hours. Um, then we. Um, we, 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 we strain the, the bone broth, we uh, remove, uh, if, if any of you have, have made bone broth uh, by yourself at home, you know that it generates a, um, a fat phase, a lipid phase uh, on the top of the, of the bone broth, uh, we remove that one. Um, then we do a gentle uh, drying and comparing to, to that, that spray drying that the, that the standard uh, collagen production uses, we have, um, we have investigated which uh, parameters uh, to um, to adjust to make sure that we have the collagen is in its most uh, native structure and also uh, preserving the, the hyaluronic acid, uh, which, which is a molecule that is that is very um, heat uh, heat sensitive. And then we uh, we, we package uh, the product. Um, in these uh, these sustainable uh, sustainable packaging. So on this these <clears throat> two uh, two uh, the next two slides, I have just tried to summarize how uh, sustainable collagen production might uh, might look like versus the, the the standard collagen industry. So in terms of animal welfare, the sustainable uh, production that that we practice. Prioritize uh, animal welfare, um, the humane treatment of, of the animal. Uh, we definitely promote these free range uh, farming. So all of the farms that we use are from free range uh, farming. Um, standard collagen industry uh, are not so concerned, uh, to be honest, about the animal welfare. And this uh, ex intensive farming with these big feedlots um, are making an impact of, of the um, of the immediate environment around these uh, these manufacturing sites then we we have the the, the term regenerative agriculture um, so sustainable uh, collagen pr production they to the greatest extent possible uh, emphasize these uh, regenerative farming techniques we will we will try to look at, at some of those uh, later in, in the presentation uh, it, uh, so these sustainable collagen productions also focuses on soil health and biodiversity and and, and then as we have just discussed the, the carbon uh, uh, um, emission um, so the, the soil health is of course uh, very very important and um, making sure that you have this uh, this this topsoil um, that 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 your cattle is um, is thriving on um, 
it's just very very important not only for the for the animal uh, but but also for for the environment um, standard collagen uh, industry contribute to some uh, some uh, deforestation and this uh, habitat destruction and also degrades the, the soil health as you don't have a um, you don't have a balance between let's say how many animals you have versus the this the square meters of, of land or so so it's 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 um it's not a it's not a balanced system it's not a it's not a functional system it's not a sustainable sustainable system if we um if we look at the, the response, responsibility in terms of sourcing then then uh, we source uh, the, the the raw materials for the collagen that we get from from local and certified organic farms. Um, we sh we are there on the farms. We 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 talk to to the farmers themselves. We ensure that the animals is raised according to these uh, environmental standards and some of the, um, the ethical standards that that we have ourselves. Um, the, the standard collagen industry are not always prioritizing these sustainability and welfare uh, aspects as um, of course it's um, it's a it's a matter of, of expenses and it's a matter of um, of uh, the best interest of the of the shareholders of these uh, these big uh, big uh, companies so um, and these these animals that they use for the collagen productions are typically from these intensive farming operations, uh, which is um, which is a, a horrible sight if you have uh, seen one of those uh, in, in in real life or just pictures or, or videos. Then we we also touch about the the, the waste reduction. So so we we tr we try to the best of our ability to minimize um, the waste, the generation of waste, um, and kind of maximize the the resources. Um, that that's also why we have this uh, this pressure cooking uh, this pressure cooking system. We we are able to use uh, less water in our in our production and and less uh, less power. Um, one aspect is also that we we get all our power from from um, um, biogas systems or uh, on uh, or uh, wind energy. Um, so that's uh, that's one thing that we um, that we we try to uh, to do as as much as possible, and then um, what what we actually use in our the bone broth um, uh, collagen production is a, a kind of a waste product in some ways because it's not always used. So <clears throat> um, the problem is if. Uh, Let's say the, the typical the typical way of uh, of utilizing a cow is that you, of course, sell the meats and you can uh, sell some organs also, but the, the bones are typically very difficult to get get rid of, uh, so to say. Uh, you you uh, kitchens or bigger um, uh, food service systems will will not buy these these bones. It's very um, it's very cumbersome to very difficult for them to turn it into to food um, they they will cook it for a long time to to make broth and it's very inefficient um, so so usually these bones either get picked up by by a company which just burns them off for for energy or they are turned into uh, to um, to food for other animals um, further down the the, the chain and that's that that's not an optimal uh, solution. So what what we have done here is uh, utilizing a um, a uh, side stream uh, to upcycle these um, these bones and use them in uh, in our in in our production. Um, yeah, and these uh, these this use of byproducts may may not be used in in, uh, in standard collagen uh, industry. They um, typically, will um, have the, the the livestock or the the, the 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 production of the animals themselves being for the purpose of the collagen production, whereas uh, what we do is to tap into a existing um, uh, kind of industry um, and using one of the side streams from from that industry. 
Yeah, so this is a, this is a interesting. So let's talk a little bit about how these modern uh, eating habits that we have have kind of altered how the um, amino acid profiles um, of the foods that we we, we eat. Um, so so this nose to tail uh, eating principle is something that has um, um, come come into in in. in Definitely in health, uh, in the health um, community, that we need to to eat more nose to tail, and this, this this means that we we have to incorporate every part of the of the animal in our diet to get a a more uh, balanced um, uh, nutrition profile in terms of our amino amino acids. So, so let's let's take a look at the, at what this means in, in in practice. So we basically to illustrate, we have uh, it is the ratio between the methionine and glycine that are two of the most important uh, amino acids to to look for in this um, in this balance. <clears throat> so um, typically, uh, what we do now in the Western world is to focus uh, a lot on. Uh, the consumption of muscle meats, eggs, and dairy and fish. Um, those products are high in methionine. Um, and this um, the, the methionine, if you have a high uh, level of uh, the amino acid methionine, you, you will deplete um, uh, the, the absorption of glycine with this uh, competitive amino acid absorption. Um, Glycine is found in the skin, the bones, organ meats, ligaments, and and is also the one of the main uh, amino acids in in for example collagen powder. So <clears throat> the balance between these two has been been skewed um, towards uh, prioritizing methionine, and that is that is not optimal for our. Um, our longevity. So both amino acids are, of course, necessary to, uh, to protect our tissues as we age and heal different, uh, different um, illnesses that we, uh, that we are experience, injuries, etc. But the, uh, the ratio between them is, is key for this, uh, this longevity. So that is, that is why we, we need to prioritize more um, glycine-rich foods which is also <clears throat> why we should consider uh, adding more uh, uh, glycine-rich foods to our diet um, through this nose-to-tail uh, style eating. Uh, I myself has in, in incorporated uh, these um, these uh, bone broth from from ligaments and, and bones, and and uh, also con consumes uh, liver and, and, and organ meats. But it is. It is not. Um, it's it's not prioritized in, in the same way in the in the general uh, public, so that is why uh, one could consider just adding a um, a collagen powder to one's um, uh, supplement uh, regime, as a um, as a functional food as a as a supplement that is that is basically a, a food. Yeah, so let's let's take just a brief uh, brief um, uh, step down the memory lane here. This is this is uh, how our story about the, the bone broth. So back in uh, back in sixteen, I I bought my my first uh, organic bones from from a butcher in, in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, and um, I mean it was, it was not normal back then to to just uh, go ask for for marrow bones, and uh, so it was kind of a Backed all thing, and uh, and that was the, the butcher uh, thought maybe I was I was a little bit uh, weird, but but that that's when it all started. Started cooking a bone broth uh, at, at home, big 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 batches. Um, yeah, I mean my uh, now wife uh, will 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 um, definitely say that the the apartment smelled like um, smelled like bone broth uh, all the time, which is not nice. These uh, these long hours of uh, of cooking. Um, what happened in uh, 2000 is that we uh, we won a um, a InnoBooster project uh, with uh, the Danish Technological Institute. So what we would like to um, to investigate there is is how can we 
uh, optimize this uh, this bone broth that we uh, that we um, that we manufacture. Um, how can we uh, get the the most flavor? But but more important for me is the functionality of the of the product. So so the the focus on on the collagen and especially the hyaluronic acid, which which has uh, anti-inflammatory uh, processes um, or um, um, uh, yeah, it modulates uh, anti-inflammatory processes. So then we we did a lot of tests during uh, during these two two years uh, with with this project. Um, we had these the design of experiments projects where we <clears throat> varied different um, different pa parameters, such as such as um, how much should we cross the bone, which pH should we use, temperature, pressure, time, etc. So it's all these different variables um, because when I cook bone broth at home, I'm, I'm just how much collagen is even there and okay, it's, it's kind of jelly, but, but yeah, how much should I take? Is it, is it two teaspoons? Is it one glass? What, what is, uh, what is the actual dose there? What we also, um, what we also did was uh, try to investigate the whole uh, evaporation, the drying of the liquid to uh, this uh, bone broth collagen. So, so um, here um, in the in the right uh, uh, down uh, down in the right uh, side of the screen, we this is an uh, evaporation at the at the Technological Institute uh, Laboratory where we we, we try to. Mm -hmm to see how 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 much um uh, can we stress the the bone broth um but still have the 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 kind of native intact collagen and and hyaluronic acid so that that all these investigation was uh, was key for our our success in developing this this project so a brief uh, introduction to to our the four main amino acids in um, in, in bone broth we have uh, we have glycine hydroxyproline glutamic acid and, and proline and these these um, amino acids has some very interesting uh, functions uh, in the in the body so so study studies have have shown that um, that for example uh, glutamic acid which Forms glutamine when it when it gets to the um, to the to the intestinal lining promotes intestinal health. Hydroxyproline, I think we some of us uh, at least have uh, tried to to hack joints and, and osteoarthritis and and used uh, hydroxyproline uh, amino acid supplements um, for for supporting uh, joints and, and ligaments. Um, um, these um, and of course glycine, we all know uh, the in, effects on the skin's uh, elasticity and, and and so on so so it's it's um I, I think of it as an as a nice benefit that it also um, uh, it has an impact on your um, your 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 your, vis your visible uh, health your your skin your hair and nails and and so forth but the most important thing is, is for me is that it that the intestinal health, the internal health of the of of uh, joints and ligaments can be improved with the with the addition of these uh, these amino acids to the to the diet. So let's take a quick look at how the collagen uh, supplement um, uh, stacks up against some of the more um, typical um, protein powders. So what what the, the our bone broth uh, the Nordic bone broth collagen powder is is uh, it's also 90, 96% protein so it, it is also can be considered a um, kind of a protein supplement in by itself but if we if we take the um, and compare um, our uh, Nordic bone broth collagen with with for example uh, hemp and pea and, and whey protein you see from the from the graph uh, here that for, for for glycine, for example, you have 20 grams of of, of glycine per, per 100 grams, and you only have two and five and five for for um, for hemp, pea, and uh, and whey uh, respectively. So, and that if you compare also for for proline and um, and especially hydroxyproline, you see that there's a very Big difference there in the in terms of uh, of the, the content of the um, 
of the bone broth uh, collagen. So, and the glutamic acid, you have you have almost the same um, the same amount of uh, uh, per, per per hundred grams in, in terms of amino acid content. But but this this just shows you that, of course, collagen is not a complete uh, protein uh, per definition, and we should always always make sure to have. Um, like a wide range of different uh, protein sources in our um, in our diet in our nutrition, but you can use these products specifically to to complement your your diet if it's if it's more skewed against um, muscle meat, uh, for example. Um, so that's that's why you should consider using a, using a, a, a collagen uh, supplement. So here we have uh, just a just a brief illustration of the the collagen peptide. So so in in the product you have these uh, type type one, two, and three um, uh, collagen. There are around eighty percent um, collagen in the the product uh, by itself, uh, and then you have this very interesting molecule uh, to the to the right is the hyaluronic acid. So. Um, this this molecule is um, so so when you when you look at your your skin for example you have collagen is 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 kind of the the the, the, the building the 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 wall the, the 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 things that hold everything together whereas hyaluronic acid is the it, it creates the, the smoothness of the of the skin it kind of holds it it, it all together uh, hyaluronic acid is also what we have in in the in the synovial fluid in our joints to make the the, the joints uh, move smoothly through uh, through our, our our motion and when we walk and use our, our joints, hyaluronic acid is is also the the key uh, ingredient in the in the tears in, in our eyes, uh, lubricating and 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 making sure that we uh, that we have a um, a, um, a nice lubrication of of our our eyes. Um, and to the right, you have these different uh, product features that are, um, uh, I, I mean, it's it's um, it's uh, it's something that that can be debatable for 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 some of the the claims here. Um, I mean, for for myself and for what have what for what I have used the product for the. Um, the conclusion was was quite clear, especially in terms of uh, how it helped my my joint uh, issues um, and my my, my ligament um, inflammation. So, um, so that, that I've been very uh, very glad for this uh, uh, this uh, collagen uh, supplement. So let's uh, let's take it uh, more of a deep dive into hyaluronic acid. So, uh, to to your left here, you have a, a um, a degradation graph from uh, from this this article that 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 tried to uh, to demonstrate or investigate how uh, fragile the hyaluronic acid molecule are uh, in terms of being exposed to uh, heat. So what they did is they, me they measured the molecular mass of the different uh, hyaluronic acid molecules and they just <clears throat> applied heat over time and just looked. Different. You have here three different heat curves, and you you see that the the one in the bottom, the the, the red one at at the 120 degrees, hyaluronic acid drastically drops and and uh, gets depleted. Um, not so much for uh, for when you do a, a lower temperature, but it still will continue to drop. Uh, um, Going beyond the, the nine hours, which which was the the last the time point here. Um, then just uh, on your on your upper right uh, corner is is the hyaluronic acid in the typical um, collagen product. So there are many collagen products, of course, that does not have hyaluronic acid um, due to the the production, as we as we talked about. Many of the companies add. Um, uh, chemical manufactured hyaluronic acid to the products, and and that's that's how they they uh, add some functionality. Um, what what we have managed is to have a it's a very high uh, natural content of uh, hyaluronic acid uh, simply from the 
from from the bones and, and, and joints that we use in our our production. Uh, and your 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 um, your right um, so, so down in your right corner. Um, these these are some of the actual uh, measurements that we did on our um, um, uh, in our uh, InnoBooster project with the with the Technological Institute. So so just to um, just to to illustrate that you have um, on on the the. The, the y-axis you have the, the the grams of the functional content of hyaluronic acid collagen and protein and on the, on the x-axis you have the the hours um, and we took samples out and measured these uh, three components uh, during this uh, this production time and you see that in in the beginning you have a high extraction of both hyaluronic acid collagen and protein but at the five hour mark around there um, you see a, a, a quickly decline of the of the content of the of the hyaluronic acid. So the 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 green um, uh, the, the green line, um, and that's that's when you uh, stop extracting more hyaluronic acid, and the depletion of the hyaluronic acid um, gets gets bigger than than how much you you extract, and you, you of course this um, um, you cannot. At some point, uh, the extraction will will stop. Um, uh, collagen and protein they continues to um, to extract a, a little more, but then uh, some other data that we have beyond nine hours, the collagen will again start to diminish. So this tells us that that the the process by which we can uh, preserve the hyaluronic acid is a very delicate process and. Um, and it, um, it it's 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 not it's not something that is is very doable uh, at home, and it's certainly something that is that is not in cannot be incorporated in the standard pr production of, uh, of collagen. So, of course, to make a, a very good um, a bone broth collagen project uh, the product, you need the bone broth liquid that you dry to be. Uh, of the the highest quality that's that's why the the the, the bone broth in the beginning that that we make uh, needs to be a high in protein uh, collagen and, and hyaluronic acid so what what we did is just um, uh, just to compare how um, how we uh, stack up against some uh, four other brands of, of bone broth we we measured there um, and we, we, we have the, the, the data, um, but we, we, we compared their protein and collagen and hyaluronic acid content. Um, and, and just to make sure that we were, um, that we were making the most, uh, uh, the, the best product that we, that we could. And some, some collagen uh, uh, or bone broth products will state that it has hyaluronic acid within the, the product, but they, they have not gone gone to the length of, of actually measuring these um, uh, the, 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 the hyaluronic acid uh, by itself in, in the product. These, these analysis are very expensive. Uh, so uh, so I, can, I can understand maybe why they, they have not uh, done it, but it's, it, is, um, it is very interesting to, uh, to compare um, your product to, uh, to others. Um, yeah, so let's let's take a look how how this hyaluronic acid um, works in 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 the body. So this this um, uh, this picture is just to illustrate how how hyaluronic acid can in different um, in different uh, instances act as uh, as a as a mediator for different processes. So. So if 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 you have a, a lower P, pH, hyaluronic acid uh, can cause inflammation, but with inflammation in in the way that we need inflammation to 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 kickstart processes uh, that uh, build, um, for example, joints and ligaments, and it can also act as a um, and at at pH seven as a as a shock absorber, a lubricant. Um, can function uh, function and has anti-inflammatory um, uh, properties. So it's a very interesting molecule. But one one of the questions that I almost always get is that, um, okay, that's nice. Hyaluronic acid uh, can do these things, and we um, 
we produce hyaluronic acid uh, in, in here, uh, but but can it even get absorbed orally when you when you take the supplement? So so of course um, we 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 looked if um, looked at the literature if this is a, this is a viable um, viable thing and um, and so when you look at different uh, different mechanisms by which the hyaluronic acid um, uh, will get absorbed uh, in the intestinal lumen, so in the intestinal tract. You see here, you have an example of the of the intestinal, intestinal tract. You have your uh, hyaluronic acid inside of the inside the lumen, so inside your your um, your digestive and intestinal tract. That that hyaluronic acid can uh, get absorbed either through the the tight junctions um, and get um, uh, modulated into these dendritic cells, which which can transport it uh, further into the the body. The hyaluronic acid can also uh, bind to these uh, the TLR four receptors and. And, and that that binding mediates um, the transport of this um, of the hyaluronic acid inside the um, uh, through the intestinal lining. So um, of course this this transport of the of kind of a more native uh, collagen and more um, uh, more native. Uh, uh, hyaluronic acid, so hyaluronic acid with with higher molecular weight. Um, that's that's that is possible uh, through uh, through different uh, biological uh, mechanisms. So that's the, the that is very uh, very interesting. So okay, hyaluronic acid can get into the body, but where does it incorporate where it needs to be? And uh, we would like it to go to. For my own instance, it would be the the joints. Um, so what 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 the, they have also done in literature is to to look at different uh, animals. Um, here you have uh, you have uh, uh, rat and dog, and uh, they are fed um, these uh, these um, this hyaluronic acid, which is um, which is marked uh, with with carbon fourteen, with which light up in these uh, X ray uh, X ray studies. So you you feed them this uh, hyaluronic acid orally, and you you wait you wait for some time. You take some some X-ray pictures, and you can see that here that um, that the hyaluronic acid will incorporate itself in in, for example, here the the shoulder, shoulder joints and um, uh, salivary glands. So it also uh, gets absorbed into uh, into uh, and can get to, for example, eyes and um, and so forth. So so that is um, that is at least a a good indication that <clears throat> the hyaluronic acid is uh, being absorbed and being utilized in the body in the way that we uh, that we want it to uh, to be. So just uh, just a quick look at um, uh, this very interesting. Um, so in, in some instances, um, hyaluronic acid uh, does not need to get absorbed by the body to have an, an effect on the, uh, on your your health and well-being. So, what what they have studies studied is that if you if you add hyaluronic acid um, um, in the mix, then these uh, if you have an, an inflamed uh, gut lining uh, on on your left here uh, the the the, the picture of uh, dysbiosis. Uh, if you add um, hyaluronic acid, th this molecule will incorporate incorporate itself into the to the um, to the space between the the, the, the tight junction and and um, uh, mediate a, a more uh, tighter structure, which which then again el eliminates um, this um, uh, as we probably call this uh, hyperpermeability of the intestinal uh, lining, so this this leaky gut um, syndrome, um, and then thereby affecting more uh, downstream uh, processes of uh, of autoimmunity and uh, and so forth. So that is that is very interesting. So let's let's quickly go through some some myth about bone broth and some. Some things that you might be be cautioned cautioned about when when using uh, this in uh, as a practitioner, for example. So, what top myth is that it's high in minerals 
and vitamins. And that is bone broth is not high in minerals and not high in vitamins. I mean, if you you can cook this uh, bone broth with a lot of uh, carrots, maybe, and but that that level of uh, vitamin A is uh, is very insignificant. Um, uh, what what you do when you cook the bones and you you apply um, heat is that you would expect extraction of some minerals like calcium, phosphor, and, and zinc, and and these uh, trace minerals, but but all our uh, measurements have shown that the minerals, they stay in the bone complex. They, we only extract the, the collagen and the hyaluronic acid. So if, if anybody on the website uh, claims that, uh, that their bone broth is high in minerals, um, that's, uh, that is not true. That is really not true. Um, uh, this, this, um, uh, this one about the longer it cooks, the better. It's... Um, it's one of the, the claims that I have struggled the, the, the most with. So when I started uh, making bone broth, then I cooked it for, uh, for two days and um, sometimes it would gel and sometimes not. And so, so what, what the deal is that what we have also looked at earlier uh, in this presentation is that, that both collagen uh, when you go above nine hours and hyaluronic acid, when you when you go about the uh, when you go be, um, um, beyond uh, f uh, three to five hours, is that the um, the content just uh, diminishes. So, so that that's what one thing you should be aware of. Um, then uh, it's a good source of protein. So so bone broth liquid normally do not uh, is not a good source of protein. So normally you will have maybe. If it's uh, if it's good, 2.5 grams of protein per 100 milliliters. So you have really have to drink a lot of bone broth uh, a day to have your protein needs covered. Um, so so that is um, that, that that is one thing to be aware of. Then some I say it's high in heavy metals. I mean it's uh, you really have to to crash and cook the bones for a long time to extract any uh, any heavy metals uh, there so none of our tests have shown that we can we can uh, stress the bones enough to get any he heavy metals out uh, some cautions is um, is the tryptophan depletion so um, tryptophan of course if you decrease that you can you result in lower uh, serotonin levels uh, that can potentially lead to uh, feelings of anxiety and, and uh, some light of depression, et cetera. So, so if you, if you um, take a lot of collagen, then you should maybe consider also having foods high in tryptophan or adding a, a, a um, basically a tryptophan amino acid supplement. Just, just be aware if, if any, uh, any clients maybe have, may have problems with them. Um, with, with this. Um, also, the conversion of hydroxyproline uh, to oxalates uh, is something to be aware about if you have patients, individuals that are sensitive to oxalates. Uh, I know myself, I, I will not go above, let's say, 10 to, to 15 grams of, of, protein, of uh, collagen and peptide um, um, uh, bone broth a day. Um, so, so that's that. That is just individual. Someone can start at the f f 50 grams of uh, of uh, collagen powder and be be perfectly fine. So that's you just have to be um, be aware, um, uh, specifically if if uh, if clients have any um, um, like problems with uh, with with kidneys and and um, and filtration. Yeah, so this, this slide is just to, to quickly show you how we try to, trying to build our pr production and sourcing um, to uh, align with the, the, the global goals for sustainable nutrition. So, so um, uh, all the, the big uh, United Union and all these big um, um, uh, bodies that regulate these, um, these guidelines have, have different um, um, recommendations on how to improve uh, the su sustainability of um, of your uh, your manufacturing, and that is definitely what what we try to do in terms of we 
we we source the um, uh, the raw materials and we we try to to be a valuable partner in the circular um, economy around these uh, site site stream um, um, utilization of, of site stream uh, processes okay so so this is uh, this is also um, um, very interesting i know it's a, it's a quite of a busy busy slide and uh, <laughs> And um, I don't, I don't expect uh, expect you all to um, uh, to to just uh, get this uh, at at the first glance. But 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 why is this regenerative agriculture uh, carbon neutral? I think it's very important for us to stress that there's a big difference between uh, how uh, bigger uh, cattle operations that are not regenerative uh, work. Um, and how they um, pollute the environment, and how uh, regenerative agriculture actually can can be carbon neutral and and help uh, help um, bind um, uh, the carbon into uh, into topsoil. First, uh, on your on your left here, you have uh, basic fossil fuel uh, burn off. Um, so basically, uh, carbon from from the earth that could be oil, gas, etc., is being uh, processed, burned off in the atmosphere. Um, that's that's basically it. Uh, environmental impact um, is is uh, is high here. So so unlike uh, this process, let's have a quick look uh, on on your on your right on on the the cow's carbon cycle. Uh, if it's raised on a in a, in a grass fed environment and on regenerative uh, land so so let let's start uh, looking at the carbon that the cow eats from from the grass this this carbon uh, is, is bound in the the meat and the milk and the bones uh, but most of the carbon is bound in the manure um, that the cow uh, produce so yeah, basically the the poop um, um, so, so this this uh, this uh, this uh, manure is is key in creating a living topsoil uh, on the grazing land, which is filled with the microorganisms. Uh, this environment uh, creates healthy grass, uh, healthy roots um, that um, can hold carbon, so it doesn't get into the atmosphere. Uh, uh, and another another nice things uh, about this topsoil is that it can hold uh, a lot of water so it uh, you can prevent floating of crops and you have more stable uh, stable environment around your your fields um, now let's, uh, let's switch, switch back to the cow and look at the, how much uh, how much of this uh, hated uh, methane this is ch4 is uh, is uh, is melted um, out by the um, um, and breathed out by the by the cow. So the uh, this methane is um, is uh, having great impact on our climate, but is it is converted into um, uh, in the atmosphere to, to water and and and, uh, and washed down. And this this uh, CO two is used by by the by the grass for um, photosynthesis and therefore is just bound into the earth again. So this, if you can see kind of this, this the, um, the, um, the cycle here of, of, um, of the, the carbon with, which, uh, which make this process a unique for, for grass and uh, regenerative agriculture. Um, this do, does not apply to farms uh, that that uh, that use uh, feedlots and use conventional methods of uh, of uh, cattle um, cattle farming. So 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 these points are exactly why we only use cattle then that live up to these um, regenerative uh, guidelines. Let's uh, let's quickly look at the, the life cycle of uh, such a, a amazing cow that we that we have here. So. We use these uh, ancient Nordic races, Holstein, uh, uh, Nordic Red, and Jersey, and very slow go growing races, and 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 used to living in in, in Nordic uh, Nordic environment. Um, so from 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 spring until um, until autumn, these um, these uh, these cows are uh, fresh, uh, are fed fresh grass. They have a minimum grass time per, per of six hours per day. 
So um, one thing is to notice that all year they have access to drink, uh, fresh drinking water. They use no um, preventive uh, drugs, uh, antibiotics. They use no grains and legumes, which is also uh, an important thing. I think an animal is supposed to eat their native diet um, of grass and not not something else. Um, and that 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 also applies for human as well as uh, animals. Um, so from autumn until uh, until spring, then we have another um, another season uh, there. Then the, the feed for these cows are dried grass. So of course, there are no fresh uh, fresh grass, at least not in the northern uh, northern Europe. Um, they have access to shelters. Um, we have a minimum of how much space the cow uh, can have when it's inside, and it has to be outside eight to twelve hours uh, per day. So that is that is the the agreement that that the farmer has with uh, with with us and the author authorities um, uh, regulating these um, these farms. So a, a brief look at our, our supply chain. So it, it all starts with this uh, Nordic regenerative nutrient rich soil. Uh, in Denmark and in Sweden, we they they are organic and grass fed, pasture raised. Um, they are slaughtered um, humanely. Um, some of them are also slaughtered at the farm. So we have this uh, on-farm slaughter to make it even more uh, like humane and de-stressful for the, for the animal. We take the meaty bones uh, together with ligaments and, and joints. We cook them to bone broth. It's gently dried to create the collagen powder and then we package. Uh, and we, we do all the analytical testing of the, of the product. Um, the packaging um, is... Is, uh, is from from Germany and and it's uh, recycled uh, paper. Um, the labels are also recycled paper. So, um, so, so, so all these processes are ordered, of course, by, by our, ourselves, the, the Danish, the Swedish food uh, authorities, and um, and we are very uh, very pleased to uh, to have this uh, this process. Yeah, so we know our supply chain from nutrient to final product. I think it's uh, that's that's the key key message here. A uh, quick glance of the of the of the of the product. Um, you you have this uh, this uh, around eighty percent um, uh, collagen. Um, almost hundred percent of it is uh, is, is protein. Um, you have all uh, nineteen amino acids, uh, or you have nineteen amino acids there. Uh, all nine essential. However, in levels that are that vary, uh, as uh, as we have talked about, so so this is not an, an this is not a protein supplement uh, you can use by by itself only. Uh, we produce it in Denmark, Danish Danish uh, authorities uh, certified organic and, and EU certified. Um, these are some of the benefits that we have uh, touched upon throughout the the, the presentation. Um, so, so these uh, these these benefits are, of course, very valuable to um, to explore for, um, for for yourself and friends and family um, clients. So, how how do you use the the product? Um, I mean, it's um, it's um, it's just an unflavored uh, uh, beef um, uh, beef bone broth collagen. So it's it's not it's not like it's a meaty beefy. Uh, taste by itself of course it's very um, it's very applicable for these savory dishes and uh, um, like soups and stews and um, and, um, and 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 the like you can also just drink it by itself um, drink it heat it um, the, the bone broth the, the collagen powder uh, you need to to um, to dissolve it um, uh, very thoroughly uh, because of the hyaluronic acid content can kind of clump a little bit, but it it makes a, a fantastic um, um, a latte um, uh, of, of any of any kind because the hyaluronic acid binds a lot of air, so it makes it f fluffy and uh, and have a lot of um, a foam in, uh, in in your drinks. Um, I, I use it. Personally, in uh, just sprinkle on on some meat to to make the amino acid profile uh, better. I I, I blend uh, our uh, smoothies for my, my daughters with, with this, and they 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 like it. There's nothing with with the taste there. We we also have a, a lot of people actually baking with it. So 
if you make, for example, pancakes, the the, the fluffiness will also um, translate there and, and make the um, make the pancakes very uh, very nice. You will not such a such a short time of heat exposure will not um, de destroy the the hyaluronic acid to uh, to a meaningful uh, extent. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's it um, from from me. And um, yeah, back to you, Anne Katrine. Yeah, yeah, I've been taking notes here. Of <laughs> of came up. Uh, I think, of course, um, and that's uh, of course a, a frustration. But a lot, some of the questions came was on absorption in like human absorption. Mm. And is it is the whole molecule uh, absorbed uh, versus like hydrolyzed uh, collagen? Uh, and of yeah. course, we have those studies really but maybe you can comment on it now of course you did it showed it on the dog and a mouse so uh... yeah yeah of course so so um so definitely the studies show that that you will get some um um so what they what they do is they 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 take the the molecular weight of collagen or hyaluronic acid as a measure of how um how broken down it is so these these will show that you that you of course throughout the the, the stomach acid and then enzymes uh, in, in uh, inherent in your body will will break break down hyaluronic acid and, um, and 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 collagen, but still it will it will so enough of it will survive to make a um, a meaningful meaningful impact on on joints and and um, and, and other. Uh, other glands and and just the effect by itself on the intestinal lining so not even getting absorbed there it's um it's, it's very uh, very interesting but a very good question so um another question was on dosage how much is a high intake of uh, the product yeah i would uh, i would say so the, the the most that i have used it also for uh, for uh, for different clients is is around forty to fifty uh, grams per day. That's that's a that's a quite high loading dose in the beginning. Try that maybe let's say two weeks, three weeks, uh, maximum a month. Then 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 scale down to 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 around um, let's say between ten and 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 um, and fifteen uh, grams per per day that 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 would be then within let's say three months to five months I, you will definitely know uh, what the effect has been from uh, from from the supplement so the 10 to 15 grams that's a maintenance dosage or yeah. a normal dosage that, that that's a normal dosage um what what they have done in the literature is studying collagen supplement all the way down to to two uh, 2.5 grams per day which has has shown effect on on uh, on on skin and hair and nail and i mean that's um that's uh, unfortunately how the literature is right now it's it's driven by uh, uh, more of a beauty beauty companies that have the, the parameters uh, of um, so they look at at skin health and and hair hair and nail and not not so much on on the intestinal um, uh, health or joint health uh, but but that's um, that, uh, around ten to 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 fifteen grams would be uh, would be good. Okay, so then the question came out. Now you mentioned the oxalates. Then there is purines, and then there is um, also for the, in regards to gout. Mm. And there was also histamine came up as yeah. well. Yeah, histamine is um, that's also uh, has has been a big one for for me throughout my career with the with bone broth. Um, so so what I also did in the, in the beginning at home was to cook this for a very long time on on the stove um, for forty eight hours and. And that produces a lot of histamine. Um, I mean, the way the way that we have um, the way that we have um, uh, outlined the, the manufacturing is that we we only have uh, heat exposure in a couple of hours. Um, so that if you can if you can imagine forty eight hours compared to to maybe two to three hours, 
then the histamine production there will be will be very um, very diminished. So that's that's one way that we limit the the histamine um, the histamine impact of uh, of the the bone broth the collagen. Okay. Yeah, and of course, if you are if you are sensitive to, to some of these uh, other um, molecules, um, of course, it's in in it it is this game about health is just an in, in individual thing, and we you need to to take these into consideration uh, when you um, when you um, yeah recommend products like this. So, and can you comment on the purines or? You, you of of course these these things are um are a factor and um yeah that's why we are we are practitioners and we we must must take these uh, into consideration in terms of the the the, the patient by itself so um a, a good question how can you have such long shelf life without preservatives um, yeah, good question. It is um, so. So, so what we what we do is that we for the for the powder right now we have um, uh, around two years uh, of shelf life. Um, that is that is basically because the 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 um, the water content is so so low. So we we um, very particularly control the water content, and that is. The, um, that is very low, and then you you will not have any, let's say, hydrolysis of, of any um, of any protein or or collagen, and you will not have any any meaningful breakdown of, of hyaluronic acid. Um, whereas if you have it in a liquid form uh, and you have it, let's say, on um, on uh, ambient storage. Um, in, in your living room, most of the bone broth you can buy, it's just on the shelf in, in the store, Th that will definitely uh, break down hyaluronic acid uh, over, over uh, let's say, um, uh, three months to, uh, if there is even anything left from the, from the manufacturing. But what we do with our bone broth is, is also to keep it very, very cold after production. Um, so it's, it, it's very, um, it preserves these, um, these um, these key ingredients. Super. That's I think there's lots of uh, questions on the side. I think time has 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 gone. Um, hmm. What I will do, Thomas, I will hmm. get all the questions and comments, etc., and make sure you get them because then yeah, maybe it can go into a Q and A or something. Um, hmm. We're sitting here with so many bright-headed people that they have all these high-level questions. So Definitely. I thank you very much, Thomas, for a very good presentation. I heard this presentation, not exactly the same presentation, but the first time I heard Thomas present on collagen was in Stockholm uh, nearly a year ago. And I was like, yeah, I can't wait to get him onto Come this. On. Now. So I hope you've all um, enjoyed it. And look out for your mail because there will be a special discount. So not just uh, the patient or practitioner price, but practitioners will also get a further uh, discount. So um, look out in your mail um, for those of you who signed up and which you all did. And then uh, hopefully I will see most of you uh, next week. And Thomas, again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> See you. Bye. If you do not already have an account with us, please contact our team and we will assist you. If you found this webinar helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel.